Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Redeemed Marriage Podcast. This is Rusty and Heather Bryant, and we're glad to be back with you this week. This has been quite a crazy week, and uh, we're actually recording this a little bit earlier than normal because we're traveling to two different places. And uh, the coolest thing about that, I was thinking about this today, like we're squeezing this in um, to a little bit of time that we have, actually before we do a couple of marriage coaching sessions. And, you know, I think that it's really important when you and your spouse are, you have a purpose, you believe in something, you're doing something together, and you're both excited about it, no matter how, I mean, I don't even say inconvenient. Taxing. But taxing, yes. It's, it's, uh, this, this is hard, but like neither one, I mean, we, we talked today, you know, a little bit ago, and we were like, hey, let's try to get this squeezed in. And we were both fine with it, even though, I think if one or both of us was not excited about this, we'd just be like, oh, we don't have time. But it's important, and our listeners are really, really important. So thank you for that, and uh, we're glad to to be sharing with you again today. All right, so we got to jump into this topic, and uh, we're going to get to sort of an end point where there's going to, I guess, be more of a... I guess more of a um, tips, suggestions, whatever. Like, why stay together? Right. No matter what your no matter what your situation is in marriage, and of course, our story is infidelity. So we're going to speak from that um, background. But no matter what your struggle is, what you've gone through, this is what we want to get to at the end. Is we want to get to. Why should we even stay together? Like, what is the goal in that? But the reason why this came up, I asked you a really interesting question last night, something that I've never even really thought about a whole lot, but I just kind of wanted to get your opinion on it. And so we, we talk to lots of different couples, and they come from all different backgrounds. Some of them are believers in the Christian faith, like we are. Some of them are just very marginal Christians, like all over the spectrum. Um, you know, some are devastated by what might have happened in their uh, in their relationship because of their belief system. But then there's some that really don't have a belief system, and they're just married, and they're trying to figure out, well, how do we survive something devastating that's happened to us? So the question I asked you last night, and I didn't necessarily have an answer, but I loved your answer. So that's why we're actually talking about it today. So the question that I asked you was if you thought that it was actually easier in some cases for people that were not believers or Christ followers or some sort of faith, um, you know, some sort of a faith background— if it was easier for them, and and maybe even statistically, I wonder if more of them stay together after something like infidelity than those who are Christ followers, you know, uh, believe the Bible, follow. And I had reasons for asking that because my my line of thinking was, you know, these people that don't really have a faith background— they're they're married and they're living, you know, as a married couple, but they don't have this um, faith backed moral compass. Now they have. I mean, there's good people, That's and right. and I, and I do believe that so many of them, like they know something's not right about, you know, having an affair or right. being with somebody that's not your spouse. However, there's a lot of those people, too, that there's open relationships and, you know, that kind of stuff that because they just don't they don't have the same set of guidelines right. that somebody that that might be a Christ follower follower would have. And so I thought, well, is it easier for those people to kind of just brush it aside and be like, oh, well, you screwed up, you know, and I mean, I screw up and. Heck, I may do the same thing one day, and, you know, who knows? Um, 
And I'm not downplaying those people sure. at all and their commitment to marriage. Right. I just was raising the question because on the flip side of that, I think about how difficult it is on one hand for, because because we can sit here and we can say, how did we, we could have never made this without our faith mm-hmm. and without our our faith background and our belief in Jesus and what, you know, that part of our lives. But at the same time, maybe that's what makes it harder sometimes Mm -hmm. because there's this set of beliefs that we believe and even biblically where you can justify and say, well, I mean, you crossed a line. Mm -hmm. You crossed a biblical line. And so I've got every right to leave. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I asked you that question because I was like, does it make it harder for people that are Christ followers as opposed to those that really don't have any faith background and they're just kind of like, yeah, let's stay together. It's just easier that way. And your answer was amazing, and I loved it. Oh, great. So I'll tell, never say it again. So tell, way you, tell your answer. Well, before I, say, before I say my answer, I want to tell you, and you probably don't know this, I remember specifically where we were like waiting to turn left on county line county line road specifically know where we were when you said to me and it was early after I confessed to having an affair it was really early you said to me like I think all the time how could you have done this because we are Christians and you know the rule, you not the rule, you know the um, standard that we're supposed to live by. And then you said, I mean, there's people all over that don't even have a faith in God and don't even believe in God and don't have these um, moral standards and they stay married and don't have an affair. Yeah, I remember. I remember Do that you? conversation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that was hard for me because. I was like, yeah. I mean, at that point, it was still like, "Mm -hmm, yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, I mean, I didn't have an Mm -hmm. answer for it. But that's the same type type thing, you know, like you would think it would be easier for somebody that didn't have the standards that we have as Christians because of the Ten Commandments. And it tells us, you know, that we're not to commit adultery. You would think that would make it harder for us to step out and right. step out, step over the boundaries of marriage. But, I mean, it would make that harder for us to do. Yeah, because I remember, like, now that you're bringing this up, I just remember thinking through all of that and going, you know, there's people out there that they don't adhere to this, to this Christian faith like us, and they're just good people. Right. And they just know. That, yeah, that's not right. That's right. Like, don't do that. Yeah. And I thought, how could you or how could anybody, right. you know, that that really is, a, you know, professing to follow Christ and his teachings and all of that. How does that happen when other people that don't even, right. you know? And of course, we've talked through a lot of stuff between um, 12 years ago, because I, like I said, that was definitely in the first month of us processing, if not the first few weeks of us processing. And we've come a long way since that. But the question you raised to me last night, um, I really, you know, I answered pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. Um, It wasn't like, oh, let me ponder this and see what other people say. It was pretty straightforward what I, what I believed, because I felt like you were saying when you asked me that you thought it would be easier for people to stay together that we're married because we, you know, have this covenant relationship that we have said before each other and before God that we're going to stay together. And I do believe that that is true, that we want to honor that covenant. But I also think that's really dangerous because we are honoring a covenant without our hearts being really ready to stay in our marriage and make it good. So then I compared that to the people who don't have, 
you know, who it's just a piece of paper or a license, a license of marriage mm-hmm. where it's not necessarily a covenant before God mm-hmm. in their eyes. It's a contract. And yeah. in most cases, I mean, you know, let's let's give the benefit of the doubt too that it's a commitment. Like sure. they're making a commitment right. to someone. Yeah, a commitment. I like that. And but for somebody who has made a commitment, but yet they don't think biblically about it being a covenant before the Lord mm-hmm. and to each other before the Lord before the Lord. Um if they don't have that, then I think it's easier for them mentally to say, okay, well, it didn't work and we're just going to break the contract, break the, break the contract and just say, you know, they didn't honor their commitment. So I'm mm. out and they don't have to worry about that covenant relationship. But when they choose to stay, they're doing it because they want to make their marriage work. Mm. Where That's I good. think That's good. believers who are very, firm in their faith and trying to find, I mean, to follow biblical principle, then they're choosing to stay because they're in a covenant relationship and they know it's, quote, wrong to leave, but their heart is not in it and to make it. It's not a choice because they want to. It's a choice because they have to. I think that's, I think that's so good. All of that was perfectly said. Let's do this. Let's maybe talk through, let's just say that there's, I I have a feeling that a lot of people that listen to us, they are believers, no matter where they are on the spectrum. Not everybody, but there's a lot of them because that's what we teach and that's what Mm -hmm. we're, that's what we're um, promoting and talking about and just how, how our story intertwines with our faith. But for somebody out there that's either gone through infidelity or something else that's been some sort of a marriage crisis and they're electing to stay together, let's throw out some some reasons why people stay together, especially believers. So I'm talk, talking about believers because you've already talked about the person that's a non-believer that, you know, they may stay for some of these same reasons. Sure. But for the most part, they're like, hey, I want to try to make this work because— we're compatible. We've made a commitment to each other. You know, let's 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 see if we can make this work. But for a believer, there is first of all, like you said, there's this covenant, and and there's this, um, you know, I made a commitment before God, and I want br- I don't want to break that. But I think there's other reasons that people stick around too. Right. Yeah. Well, I think one for both would be children. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's believers and non <laughs> like yeah. you know you want to s- stick around for um your children um how about this i thought about this today i think a lot of people um and maybe i'm wrong but i don't think that i am i think that some couples that are a part of a faith family will stick together because of their reputation inside of the faith family sure most people, I don't think you're wrong. Yeah, and most people would never know what's happened mm-hmm. because people don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. But they have decided, you know, one person got caught or one person confessed, and it's a mess. But they're like, "Hey, we're a part of this church, or we're a part of this faith family, and we can't ruin our reputation mm-hmm. by splitting up." Mm-hmm. Like, so we're just yep. going to... S- and I think that that's the case, even if there's not infidelity involved. I think that if people are just tossing around, you know, yes, I yes, don't love you 100%. anymore or whatever, they're not going to go and get a divorce because of what it would look like. Yeah. 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 Um, I think that for sure. I think that some of it too is, and this this kind of plays into the covenant, but like, I do think that... You know, Bible believing Christians, they they have these strong convictions. You know, there's verses that we pull out of the Bible that says God hates divorce. And, you know, and we and we hold on to that and we and we say, Well, if he hates divorce, then I'm not gonna do it, you know. Right. And so they stick around because of a conviction, something, mm-hmm. you know, strong like that. Or um, guilt. Like they're they're afraid that they would just live Forever yeah. in shame and guilt if they, right. you know, chose to do that. But I do think that also, and this is a great reason to stay together, is that there, because of their background of faith, there is some belief in a 
hope that there's a God that can do a miracle. That's right. That's and, big enough. Yes, because we we see those stories and we believe them from mm-hmm. the Bible. And we've seen, you know, just like, I mean, if God can raise the dead. Sure then he can certainly raise a marriage. That's right. Well, and not only that, but look at the people he uses in the Bible. Mm. Like when you look at the character, I mean, he uses crazy people like us. Oh, yeah. (laughs) People who, you know, I mean, you know, even like we could name some, but I mean, even the one that comes to mind so much for me is David. I mean, he calls him a man after God's own heart, but yet David uh, I mean, what a mess! What a mess! And and so you know, adultery, and then yeah. had the husband of yeah murdered, murdered, yeah, and yeah, and that's not the only stuff, but sure. those are the big ones. And you know, so I mean, obviously we can relate to that so much. And then to see that he is literally called by God, a man after God's own heart, right. and. And so if you know the Bible at all and you know, you know, these stories and if you spend any time under um, a teacher or preacher, then you have learned that he uses that even those people, Mm. like even though we're a mess. And so you kind of have that hope um, in the back of your mind that he's big enough for even your your problem and your the problems in your marriage. I think about that a lot because we we get a chance to work with a lot of couples. We're doing a lot of marriage coaching right now, which is so incredibly life giving mm-hmm. to us. It is, and you know, and then you just have those random emails or messages where people, you know, literally their words are your story and your podcast, and you know have have made such a difference in my marriage, have changed my, you know, all that. And I just stop and I go, this is insane. Yeah. Well, and it's not our story. (laughs) No, but it's just crazy to know that, I mean, uh, what a screw up, you know, that, that, and our marriage was literally falling apart. Mm -hmm. And, but from that, it's like, God just, resurrected a marriage and not only that but he was like let's go let's go help other people right. and That's i'm right. like and it's just it you, is just like the people in the bible do you ever think back and go what if you hadn't stayed like you know i i i've said it before i still get just, you know even our podcast picture if you hadn't heard me say that it's i love the cover of our podcast because it's rusty leading us so well but then i'm just kind of following along giddy behind him just still thankful that he stayed and i think sometimes maybe i think about it more because i'm the one that you know messed up but i but i just think about what if he'd had not stayed like what if you chose to leave what if you had listened to the dozen, I'm just going to say dozen, not dozens, <laughs> because I think dozen sure. um, just were brave enough to voice it to you. But there were probably dozens of people that thought, what in the world? I mean, I'd be gone. Mm. Like, why is he staying? Um, and, you know, when I think if you had listened to any of those people, this is why I'm so passionate about it being God's story, not ours. Mm. because he put it on your heart to stay because he knew the bigger picture. He knew where we were going and where the lives that he was going to be able to touch through us. And I think that's just powerful. Well, I I do think about it all the time, actually. And, mm. and really the reason why I think about it all the time is because this is the whole point of this episode it's it's not you know diving into this to these questions and and what we were you know tossing around kind of for fun yesterday you know when it just was something that came up but it's more of and and here's the meat this is this is where we wanted to go today and you just teed it up but where we want to go today is i do think about that all the time because if i had not made the choice to stay then there's no way that I would ex- be experiencing the joy of marriage that I have today. 
And what happens is when these people, this is going back to the beginning of what we were talking about, these people that are, you know, sticking around because of a covenant or, I mean, those are great. Sometimes you just need a reason. We've said That's that right. before. Sometimes sure. you just need a reason mm-hmm. to stay. And if it's your kids, if it's the covenant, if it's, you know, your reputation in the church, I mean, I hope it's not that, but yeah. but if it is, um, you know, a strong conviction, great. Sometimes you just need a starting point. That's right. But and it's a decision. That start that starting point is a decision. That's right, and that's what can put you on the path. But mm-hmm. what all what tends to happen is, and I believe this is what happens to a lot of Christian marriages, they just stick around because they feel like they have to and need to. But it's a lifeless marriage. That's right. And so what we're trying to say every time we talk to you guys, and especially today, is we just want to answer the question, why should we even stay together? And we we are saying to stay together for all of those reasons because they're valid, but that's not the end goal. The end goal is that we know that God can completely transform your marriage. And so, yes, when I think, what if I had not chosen that? Well, I would never know the fruit and the benefit and the joy that we experience now. And so the whole reason why we do this is so people can have hope. And people and and yes, there's marriages out there that are great and they love, you know, they listen to us because we've been through so much stuff that we can tell just tips about marriage and you know, they come to us for, you know, how do we make our marriage better? Like, what should y'all have done to not be in the position, you know, Mm -hmm. all of that. But most people come to us because they're like, you know, whatever y'all have, like, how do you get there? And you get there first by committing to stay together. Mm -hmm. and, And for some reason, I feel like we have to say this every time we, there are people out there that cannot stay with That's their right. spouse. And and you've already had to leave them yep. for various reasons. And we would never tell someone to stay in an abusive relationship, addicted relationship, you know, um, the adulterer that, you know, is just habitual and will mm-hmm. not repent. Like mm-hmm. those, we get it. But we're talking about when two people decide, and they may be really far on the spectrum of, deciding. Right. That was my air quotes that nobody can see. But, <laughs> but you have to say quote 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 quote. You know, they may be on you know, they may be far apart where one of them's all in and the other one's like, maybe I'll stick this out. But there once that decision is made, it's we want the decision to be made because you can look ahead and go, okay, there is hope. You know, God can transform any marriage. And make it better than it was before whatever happened to you. Yeah. And in our case, you know, I would even say the let's just say a year before you started making terrible decisions that led to infidelity. I think we had an okay marriage. I mean, I was never unhappy sure. in our marriage even up to the day that you confessed. Mm-hmm. Looking back, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. There's all kinds of things that I can, you know, red flags and stuff mm-hmm. now. But even those that time before everything came out, our marriage today is like astronomically better than it was then. Mm-hmm. And I don't believe that you have to go through an affair to have a marriage That's like right. ours. That's right. But there are people out there that are going through something terrible or have gone through an affair, and you're like, I am just sticking this out, but this is a lifeless, going nowhere marriage, and we're just trying to tell you it does not have to be that way. That's right. That's right. Can we talk next week about ways to make (coughs) sure that you bring life back to your marriage and how to ask God to do that for you? I'm just kind of claiming a topic. Yeah. Because, you know, it's one thing to say, um, you don't have to have a lifeless marriage, but I can hear somebody in their car right now going, okay, 
Well, then tell me yeah, how to get it. What do I do? What mm-hmm. do I do? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, because I know that it's a decision. And I talk a lot about making decisions and steps and obedience. Yeah. Um, but then feelings coming alongside because mm. you're stepping in obedience and honoring Christ in your decisions. Mm. And so I don't want to leave people hanging um, with choose to right. stay together and let's and and don't settle for a lifeless marriage. Like it can be better. Mm-hmm. It can be full. It can be better than anything you've ever known. But we need, you know, and I don't want to say step one, step two, step three. Right. But here well, are some things you can do. That's right. To because make that's it what better. We, that's what I mean, and that's where our heart is. Our heart is coaching people. That's right. And, you know, in our coaching, that is, that's what we're doing is we're showing you how to move forward. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, we don't ever want to get on here and just talk about a topic and then never give you any right. real <laughs> ways. But, right. but, you know, I mean, if you're listening and you, and you just need the one takeaway, the one takeaway is that God can transform your marriage. Your marriage can be better tomorrow, the next day five years into the future than it ever has been before. And that's why we don't want you to give up on it. All right. So a couple of things really quick. The big one is uh, if you are interested in marriage coaching and you want some information, please reach out to us because I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I wish that we could do every single person that contacts us, but we're running out of time running out of space. space. (laughs) Yeah. There's not enough time in our day to Mm -hmm. do, to do all of the marriage coaching we want to do. So, um, if it's something you're interested in, please reach out. Now there's also, you know, once we finish up our five weeks Mm -hmm. with someone, then things will open up a little bit. So, um, so it's okay to, to reach out and, uh, and we're going to do our best to, to get, and if not, we can do a waiting list. Oh Yeah. So we we are um, very passionate about that, and we want an opportunity to work with as many couples as we can. And big thing on the on the uh, podcast is, man, just tell some friends. Like that's what we're finding. We we we've been coaching some people recently, multiples that have said we found you because somebody told us about you and like these people their 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 whole marriages they're being changed and it might be just because somebody like you that's not having a problem you just know of a friend that needs to hear some hope so don't be afraid to reach out and tell them um you know give us a try listen to some of the stuff there are like 125 of these episodes so if you can't find anything that you're dealing with and i don't know what else to tell you but we are more than honored that you have chosen to spend 30 minutes a week with us and we're going to keep doing this as long as god tells us to and we're excited to be a part of your life and your marriage so uh, we'll see you guys next week